Hi everybody, this is Anne. The goal of this video is to create a detailed low-relief carving intended to fool the eye. We'll create what looks to be an elaborate three-dimensional perspective on a flat surface. And guess what? Anybody can do it. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to alter a closed form to make a template. Then I used that template to create a twisty vase. Check out the link above if you want to learn how to make this face. In this video, I'll show you one way to accentuate the movement of that unique form with illustrations of swaying weed stalks, twisted grass, and little tiny field mice. Here are some of the tools I used for the carving process. They're not very expensive and can be found online or in any pottery supply. As you see, I've already started by letting the clay dry to leather hard. Then I began to carve so you can get an idea of the end goal. Let's carve one of those beautiful wheat stalks in this space. I started with a light pencil outline to get an idea of the space the stalk will occupy. Now I begin to create the braided effect within those light pencil lines all the way to the top. To begin the carving, I started with the sharp petal-shaped carver, and holding it at an angle, I shaved away a preliminary layer of clay along each edge of the stalk. It's very important not to dig into the clay, but just shave the topmost layer away. You can see that when I do this, the surrounding clay surface becomes jagged from the cuts. To complete the illusion that the wheat is separated from the surrounding surface, I need to flatten the negative space. I'm going to use the edge of this tool to shave away those jags, then remove any of the shave marks too. The negative space around the illustrations will really be slightly rounded, but the eye will read it as flat. For even more polish, I wet my finger and burnish the negative space of the porcelain smooth. Remember, this won't work if the clay is grogged. Here you can see the difference between the burnished and the non-burnished clay. I continued this smoothing on both sides of the wheat spike. Now you can see that the definition is beginning to emerge. Next I'm going to use the 90 degree angle along the blade of this tool to push in the clay surface at the intersection where one wheat kernel would be growing underneath the other. Notice that I continue with all the intersections on the left side of the spike all the way to the top kernel. Now I'm going to repeat this for the intersections along the right side of the spike, starting at the bottom and working my way back up to the top. After those first attempts to create depth, I went back over the lines of each kernel with the same tool to create more separation, 
but you can see that so far my lines are still sharp and jagged. With the petal shaped carver, I'm going to round off the sharp squared off edges. I'm gently beveling those edges down so that you have softer lines. To give it more dimension, I'm using the sharp edge of the tool to undercut the lines that separate the kernels. Remember not to dig in too far with the blade, but just enough to make the eye see the separation. Then we're going to clean it up just a little bit. A damp sponge can really help to remove those clay crumbs. With just a light wipe, the sponge will pick up the debris. I continue to inspect the clay and fix the lines. Here I can see where I still have a harder edge than I wanted, which causes the kernel to appear separated from the rest. When I use the blade to push down on the edge and undercut it more, it enhances the illusion of one kernel's growing under the other. I continue working my way around the wheat spike, defining the edges and softening the lines. So the process is to shave around the positive image little by little to reveal the dimension. So you can see the difference between the kernels right here that are disconnected and those that are starting to grow together. I need to continue working that area so those lines are more distinctive but not harder. Again, I move to the negative space and shave off more of the area between the spikes. I continue to shave down the negative space little by little and flatten it out again. Finally, I'm using my sharp edge to undercut around the spike so that the eye sees it as being lifted away from the background. I burnished that harder edge with my damp finger, which will smooth away any remaining shave marks as well. As it dries, I'll go back and define edges even more and clean it up. But at this point, there's your wheat stalk. Now I'll show you how I carve a piece of grass. To echo the shape of the twisty vase, I want to create the illusion that the grass is twisted too. I simply draw lines in the sort of elongated figure eight shape. I begin, like the wheat stalk, where I shave down the sides of each outline. I rolled a thin coil, wet it, and attached it along one of my pencil lines from top to bottom. I then flattened out the coils with my thumbs in the direction of the opposite line so that the grass appears to twist back and forth.
Now I can take my tool and undercut around the raised clay portion of the grass and flatten out the opposite edge of the grass. With a wet finger, I can burnish the surface and flatten it out. As this strip of grass dries more, I can carve vein lines into it. I'll demonstrate that on this piece of grass over here. I simply use a very sharp point to create thin vertical lines. Now I'll show you how I carve the little field mouse. I started with a small coin of clay. I molded it and cut it down to fit the space that I drew of the mouse body. I carved in his little foot underneath and his top front paw. I added another coil for the tail. I then shaved away clay from around the outline of the head of the mouse. Here I'm adding a bit of clay to elevate the head of the mouse from the surface. I carved that to how I wanted it, then added the ears making sure one was beneath the other to give it perspective. I continued adding the details to the mouse to define the paws and the tail. Of course that little mouse couldn't just be floating in space, so I added another coil underneath him and sculpted it to look like he was sitting on a stalk. As the clay began to dry, I could go in and add little separations between the toes and the fingers. I then carved out his little eye and the indentations in the outer ear. Note that I continued his tail around the corner to the connecting side. Using just these three elements, I repeated these steps to complete the design around the entire form. Here are the finished pieces. On this first sample, I added Georgie's interactive pigments, Golden Straw, and wiped it back. On the second sample, I used Amico Celadon Ochre and fired it to cone 5 with a 4-minute hold. Let me know in the comments below which vase you like the best. I would love to know what you think.
Carving such detailed work can appear complicated, but if you shave the clay down little by little, you can achieve the same results. Give it a try. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It really helps us out if you subscribe and like our videos as well. See you next time in the studio.